Chapter 15, Man Overboard. It was mid-morning when we waved goodbye to the Brickells and got underway. Once it warmed up, it was a fine day for sailing and we stuck close to the shoreline. The water in the bay was clear and pretty with little waves washing against the Magellan. About 15 miles south of the Brickell place, we passed a piece of land sticking out called Black Point. Guy and Louie wanted to stop and shoot some birds, but I told them we were trying to save our ammunition. So we pushed on past and sailed until we came upon a huge mud flat that wasn't marked on the chart. I had no idea how we were going to sail across the mud bank, so I told Lily to climb up to the top of the mast and see if she could find a channel through. We zigzagged back and forth in front of that flat for another hour, with Lily yelling, there! No, wait, forget it. There's a channel! Oh no, sorry, try this one! Finally, we got frustrated and just pulled the Magellan across the mud, which was heavy and hard work. After the mud bank, we finally got into deep water again and entered Card Sound. I'd seen a lot of beautiful water before, but Card Sound was just about the prettiest water yet. The sound was 12 miles long and five miles wide, and no more than 10 feet deep, even in the deepest hole. The water was clear, like blue-green tinted air, and you could see the bright fish darting between sea fans and sponges on the bottom. The shore of the sound was thick with mangrove, and Louie proposed that we stop for some fishing. Those mangrove must be thick with fish, Charlie, Louie said, looking longingly at the shore. Think about it, barracuda, snapper, bonefish, you name it. Maybe, I said, but we better keep going. We're going to need a, to find a good place to anchor for the night. Oh, come on, Louie said. What could it hurt? No, I want to get as far south as we can. Louis didn't say anything else, but I could tell from the dirty looks he kept giving me that he was mad. He went to the stern so he could watch fish following us and probably dreaming about catching them. I wanted to go talk to him, but Guy said I should just let him be. After a half hour or so, when I still hadn't heard anything from Louis, I decided to go talk to him. But when I climbed back, I didn't see Louis sitting on the stern where I expected him. Louis, I called, Louis. There was no answer. I thought maybe he was playing a trick on me and had snuck back up to the cabin to hide, maybe because he was still mad at me. But when we searched the cabin, there was still no Louis. That's when we really started to worry. We inspected every square inch of that boat looking for him. Louis wasn't on the boat. He must have gone overboard, Guy said alarmed. We've got to find him. Louis, Louis, we started shouting and scanning the water to see if we could hear or see him, but there was nothing except the sun glinting off the water. Hurry, Guy said, turn around, we've got to go back. I rushed to turn the Magellan around so we could tack back up the way we had came. Lily climbed back up the mast to look for Louis, and Tiger and Guy positioned themselves on either side of the bow and kept their eyes on the water. No one said it, but I knew we were all thinking the same thing. What if Louie was in serious trouble? A hundred awful things crowded my head. He could have hit his head falling overboard. He could have gotten stuck in a current and been swept away. Shark! Lily suddenly sang out and my heart started racing. Look, a shark! I let the tiller swing free while we crowded at the rail and watched a big shadow glide under the boat. Bull shark! I gasped. Guy looked at me with such a worried expression that I felt as if I'd been hollowed out. We stood looking at each other and I could see in Guy's eyes that he was already thinking the worst. We all knew about bull sharks. They were the most dangerous sharks in Florida waters. To be honest, I was thinking the worst too and it was probably the most scared I'd ever been in my life. I wished desperately right then that Papa or even Uncle Will was on board to tell us what to do. Charlie, Lily yelled, Charlie, look, there's something over there in the water. Hurry, quick, Charlie. From the deck, I couldn't see where she was pointing, but I didn't waste any time turning the boat toward the place she was looking. Guy and Tiger rushed up the bow, and I could sent, and I sent a silent prayer up to God that everything would be okay. Then we saw the most amazing sight I think I'd ever seen. 
a spotted dolphin swam right up to the Magellan and rose part way out of the water. It clicked and squealed at us a few times, then jumped high, turned around and swam away a few feet. Then it popped out of the water again and waited for us to turn the boat. It wanted us to follow. Follow dolphin, Tiger shouted excitedly. I didn't need to be told twice. It was leading us along. Between Lily yelling to hurry up and the dolphin leaping in front of the bow, I thought my heart just might beat out of my chest, but I was still unprepared for what I saw next. There was Louie treading water, and there were more dolphins swimming in protective circles around him. Tiger let out with a seminole cheer, while Guy whooped and hollered on the deck, and Lily kept yelling, We're coming, Louie! We're coming! In another minute, we hauled a dripping wet Louie on board like a big fish, and he stood there on deck looking tired and a li and little sheepish. Turns out he had seen a big barracuda swimming along under the boat and leaned too far overboard to get a good look at it, then slipped right into the water. He paddled around for a few minutes, and then the dolphin showed up and swam next to him until we came around. They probably saved my life, Louis said. Did you see the shark, Guy asked. Shark, Louis said, his face going pale. What shark? It seems the dolphins had scared away the big shark and kept Louis safe the whole time we were looking for him. I think we were all a little shaky with relief when I finally pointed the bow south again and we continued on our journey. It was already late, so we anchored along the mangrove shore and Louis finally got his chance to do some fishing. In pretty quick order, he caught us two large mangrove snapper and a small grouper, and we had a fine meal of fish and pickled vegetables before we settled in for another night on the boat.